Hi, in this video I'm going to help you with a programming challenge. So in one of the classes that I'm teaching on mobile application development, I gave the students a roulette wheel game to implement. So it involves an animation of a wheel, and then of course the students have to calculate the winnings based on where the wheel stops. So let's talk about some strategies on how this would work. So here's the assignment that we're talking about. So this is a roulette wheel game that's going to show a wheel that spins, and then various places where you can place your bets, and then when the winnings are announced, you can calculate the uh, actual gain of the, of the bet. So the challenge here is to figure out where the wheel stops and how to know what number it stopped on. So here's an example graphic that you might use if you were making a roulette wheel. You can see that there is a single zero, and then there are 36 numbers around. The numbers can be classified as either red or black. They can also be odd or even or, and of course, the number themselves. So let's see how we could use some math to calculate what the winnings are. So first of all, think about the slice of a pie. Now, this pie is sliced up into 37 pieces. We have 36 numbers plus the number zero. And so when we divide 360 by that number of slices, we know that each angle of each pie is about 9.7 degrees. So that's the first math that you have to consider. Let's think of a spin now and where it stops. Let's say the first time we spin the wheel, the random number chosen to be spun was 18 degrees. What number did this stop at? Well, first of all, we would calculate 18 degrees and then divide it by the amount of one slice, which is about 9.7. So that would give us a number of 1.8. So that means it has gone 1.8 squares around the wheel. Well, we can see that it stopped on the second square. But how do you calculate that with computer uh, languages? Well, in Java, there is a floor command. And probably most other languages, you have a round down command or a floor command, something like that. So if we take the math library and floor 1.855, it rounds it down to one. So we know that it stopped at site number one or square number one. But how do we know that one is actually represented as a red 32? Well, we could do that if we created an array. Let's say the top number of the array here is the index number of our array. So it starts at zero and one, two, three, and it goes up to 37. And then inside each slot, then we can place the value of what that slot holds. So the first item in the array is the green value, so that's zero. The second one is 32, the next one's 15, the next one's 19, and we just go all the way around the wheel and provide a value for each one of these items in the array. Well, what good does that do? Well, if we know that item one was chosen because it was a, a floor of 1.8, we could look up the array saying, tell me the slots and array position one. What's in there? Well, we've defined it as 32. So you could say, we know that the 32 red was chosen. Okay, so that's a lot of math. As a human being looking at the wheel, it's pretty obvious where the number stopped. Let's do another example. Let's take a, an angle, let's say 38. I'll just take another random number. So 38, what value did it stop on? Well, it kind of looks like it stopped on the red 19, but are we sure? Well, let's do the math and find out. So the spin is 38 degrees. We know that 38 divided by 9.7 gives us 391, 3.91. Well, that means we need to floor it, and that tells us that we are at position number three in the array. So slot three is the value 19, because that's what I put into the array. And so that certainly looks like what the graphic shows. So these are some hints that you help you figure out what wheel position you stopped at. So go back to the animation and uh, see if you can make this game work now. 